Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to our channel. Hey, today is all about customizing your Harley. That's right, I have a Vivid Black 2015 Street Glide Special here with chrome engine covering. Well, the owner of this bike is tired of the chrome. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take parts off and send it out to uh, powder coat. And we're not gonna do everything gloss black. There's gonna be some accent colors in there and you're gonna to have to wait and see uh, on part two of this video what those accent colors are. All right, everybody. So one of the first things I like to do here is I like to work smarter, not harder. I do have to remove the floorboards and to get to the derby uh, primary cover and we're gonna remove the uh, shifters left you know, forward, the heel toe shifter. Sorry, words are tough. The shifter arm that goes through your inner primary and your kickstand because we're going to powder coat the kickstand and the kickstand bracket but the first thing you want to do is get yourself a good pair of channel locks because the first thing we need to do is remove this spring so get your channel locks pinch the spring get a good grip on it because this is under a lot of pressure just like that and you undo the spring and now the kickstand is free flowing and up top here there you go where my finger is there's a half inch nut we have to remove that and the kickstand actually slides right out so we can get all that done right now as we speak so we'll grab a ratchet and extension a half inch socket and I'm gonna have to grab a baggie now remember, there's nothing holding this kickstand on and it's giving me a little bit of a hard time. So just bear with me. So we're gonna bring this up like it's in the up position. So it'll be easier to break that nut free. And we're not going to get the nut powder coated. What I'm gonna do with all the hardware is I'm gonna hit them with a rattle can of gloss black paint. And uh, but the kickstand stop, we will most definitely get that taken care of. So if you, you could see here that this is quite filthy. There is the, the kickstand stop right there. And so now we got to remove the floorboard, which right underneath here, there's a 3 16 Allen. I believe this is 3 8 or is it 7 16 It is 7 16 one on the front one on the back once that comes off we can remove that then also down here we're gonna have to remove this bolt and this bolt and that gets the floorboard brackets off and once that's off then there's one two more bolts that we need to remove and that'll get the kickstand bracket off all right so let me get that done and uh we'll, get, we'll continue okay now that i got all that taken apart here now I'm going to show you how to remove the bottom of your floorboard because we're going to get that replaced as well. So as you can see, we got some dimples in here. And what we have to do is we just got to squish them with a pair of pliers and push them through. So let me get the pliers and we'll do that together. The rubber. You don't want to break your rubbers. So what you do is just pushing down the lip past and as you're pushing you're pulling on the floorboard itself to help it come apart so if you're watching this hopefully you're seeing what i'm doing and understanding what i got going on so if you ever had to replace these or you wanted to get your floorboard powder coated you know you don't have to give them the rubber piece with it and there's only four of them one on each end and two in the center and this is for the 14 and newer style floorboards, uh, except for the uh, real nice ones that come on like the CVOs and things like that. And just like that. So now we'll take the base of the floorboard, we're going to put it in our box for powder coat. Now that that's done, we're going to go directly to 
our primary because it's all the boats are exposed so you want a nice long tray and you're going to need a 3 16 allen socket and it's right here so what i do is i take my my gun oh, i'm gonna to have to break them all loose the battery is not that strong and we also want to take off our derby cover now that i'm thinking about that that's one two that one's going to get a hard time so is that one so let me put a ratchet on that and just get them loose you can use an impact driver but be very careful when you do because you could do some damage to your threads and everything like that so now we're going to take out the rubber o-ring and that's something you want to replace now we're going to grab another ziploc baggie and we're going to write on there outer primary so we know what all these screws are for all right I still have the baggie for the floorboards because I didn't do the other side yet. But again, you know, staying organized. So when I go to put this all back together, it will be a lot easier because I'll know what hardware goes where. And, uh, you know, I won't spend time saying, oh, I think this is for this. I think this is for that. So, you know, you're going to spend your time wisely and making your life a lot easier guys any of you have any uh, situations where you you wanted to do something like this any ideas uh, does this does this help and you guys make up your mind do you want to do this do you not want to do this let me know in the uh, comments down below but I also have to drain the primary so I'll pull out that primary plug and that'll actually go in the Ziploc bag because this plug is actually part of the outer primary. So, you know, that's why I have a rag here. And I'm not going to change that O-ring yet. I'll change the O-ring when I go to put the primary back together. All right, so... No real heavy metallic chunks, just little shavings that's normal that you find on a job like this. And yeah, some screws are definitely longer than the others for your primary, so you'll be conscious of that. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to stop for a minute. But we're going to continue on removing our primary. We're also going to do the rear peg while we're here. Yes, I did drain. The primary but when I pull this cover off you're gonna see all the excess fluid that was left behind on the inside it's also a good time to take a look and see your primary view because with this style out of primary you don't see it all the time so here comes the outer primary gasket comes off and you can see all that extra fluid just coming on out the outer shoe look or the primary adjusting shoe does look good uh, trying to set this in a place where it can drain there you go you can just do that 
because I need this to drain because I don't want to bring it to the powder coater full of oil. All right, so there's another baggie that could go in our box. And I do have a box set up for just all the hardware in the baggies. All right, next is we're going to do our rear, pe our rear pegs and the highway pegs. And that one is a one quarter and I'll show you what this screw is for once we get this off as you can see you know, adjust the, the position of the floorboard but also once you get the screw out the pad will come off with it too just like that so the pads off and I have the screw and I have the base of the passenger floorboard it goes in the box. Now same thing with here. That is a 5 16 and we're going to put a, an extension on that because of the angle. And I will be taking apart these two sections because those get powder coated together they'll just crack and chip and you're all done but I will get a box or a baggie for all these parts so let me do that label them, and I'll get back to you okay mark this bag passenger and highway pegs because both passenger and highway pegs are going to go in the same baggie for the left and right and also you know for the highway pegs so let me get the front done i'm going to move this camera so we can all do it together we there it is and right here is our screw just like the rear peg these are the same exact pegs for, for the passenger and for his highway now what we're, what we're going to do here is I'm going to leave these on right where they are. Maybe. I don't know. I might just take them off. Yeah, I'll take them off. All right. So let me get the sockets for all of that and uh, we'll get back to it. All right, now we're going to move along here. We're going to do the horn next. And why is why am I showing you the horn? Well, you know, there's a couple wires. There's a couple clips that you want to save. So, you know, there's nothing to washer. They're not going to get powder coated. But they'll get, you know, rattle canned. And there's two wires here. There's a 716th nut here seven, and some 716th nuts there. So let me get my wrench or a socket for that. And let me unplug these wires. And make sure they are 7 sixteenths. Nope, 3 eighths. My mistake. I do make mistakes. It happens from time to time. But it does. All right. So, first thing we want to do is the bracket for the horn. Now, there is also a, a wire keep on that top one. So, we want to make sure we get that off. And here we go. These here are for the back plate for the horn. So we got those off. That goes in there. Is that one three eighths? I think so. So yeah, let me get a three eighths socket. They're usually the same size, but I guess not. Or seven sixteenths. No, seven sixteenths is too big. And the three eighths. 
is a little too small. So I'll just grab it with a pair of pliers because it's not that tight. And again, this is for the horn. So that pops out just like that. Now what I tend to do with this stuff is I will put the nut on the horn and I'll set it aside with the parts that aren't going. Now on here, there's some nut plates that are spring loaded. So all you have to do is get behind them and slide them off. And you could see what I'm talking about. Okay, those are off, so the horn goes in. And the nuts and everything, I'm going to put with the pegs. Because I'm not going to do one bag just for the horn cover. Not going to happen. Alrighty. Now, in part two, I'm going to show you a trick for getting these screws out. That's a T40 here and they're locked tight in and they're hard to get off but I'm going to show you a trick on how to do it without ruining the nut and ruining the engine guard or the frame all right so we're going to move along to the other side all right so what I'm doing now is I got everything off on the throttle side that I already removed like the passenger floor peg uh the rider floorboard i took the brake pedal off that's only a half inch nut on the back i didn't think you need me to see, need to see that happening but now i got the two trans covers two screws for the trans cover off the exhaust has to come off for me to get this off or at least moved out of the way we will be removing all the heat shields on the exhaust because those are going to get done as well like i said those are going to get coated or ceramic coated depending on what language you speak. So, I just wanted to bring you up to date what I got going on here and what we're doing. And I did have a Ziploc baggie already done up for, trans. it says trans on it, so I know it's for the transmission. These are all the bolts for the transmission. And I'm gonna have to get these from the other side. So let me do that, and when I get the cover off, you'll see it. Okay, I got the six screws out that are 3 16 for the top transmission cover. And once that's off, we can just pull that out. And if you look, there's a vent here. So what we want to do, just like we did for the floorboard, is we're going to push that in from the outside, pushing it in towards the center of the transmission. Again, without trying to ruin it. So I got to get a smaller screwdriver. One of those like giveaway screwdrivers will be good. But be careful not to tear or rip the vent tube. Now this is the vent for your transmission. So it's very important that you don't uh, tear this up. So you got to work your way around very slowly, taking your time. Again, you don't want to rush, and you don't want to ruin this piece. Well, if you do, you just go buy another one. But we're doing this, you know, the powder coating, it saves you money. Yeah, okay, it's more time. Because once it's apart, you're going to have to, uh, whatchamacallit. Once it's apart, you're going to have to wait for it to come back and now what we're going to do is work on our little cover here for the starter and that should be a three no it's not 316 all right is it a 532nd and it is and that we could just zip off with the gun there's no torque behind it and this is a secret that I do. Something like that, I will put the screw back in where it belongs. Now with the top of the transmission open, this is where you have, you wanna take a nice fresh clean rag, but also you wanna remove the gasket. If you, you know, 
and all the components of it, leaving nothing behind. So be careful when you take it off. And again, we never reuse the gaskets. This is the vent for the motor, one of them, and this is the vent for the transmission. So what we want to do, it's not really a vent for the motor, but the crankcase does breathe through there uh, for the M8s with them uh, sumping. That's some of the areas where like trash makes a really great uh, cover for that. That works very well. So I'm just going to take a rag or a paper towel, clean, fresh one, and put it right over what I'm doing here. All right, that's going to be it for tonight uh, for this video. We'll pick it up tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to take off the tank. We're going to do the, uh, the exhaust system. And we're going to do the upper lower rocker boxes, our push rod tubes, our, our tap it blocks, and of course our um, cam cover. And I'm just going to leave the timing cover on with the screws until I'm just powder coat it and be done with it because there's nothing behind it. And if he ever changes it, that's fine. We could just take the screws out, change the cover, and be done with it. All right. Actually, I might do something different with this cover. I might do it the accent color. Uh, yeah. I think, nah, it'll go gloss black. I don't want to put too much accent color all over the place and really, you know, ruin the looks of this. So, all right. We'll pick up tomorrow. And we'll move forward to getting everything done. All right, guys. Until the next one, live the best life you can. Ride often and ride hard. Like and subscribe to Doc Harley.